Welcome, welcome to another episode of Dynamite. It's week 7. It's not week 7. I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know what I mean. You have no clue what I'm talking about. But anyway, yeah, last night was Dynamite and I'm here to talk about Dynamite. Basically, that's it. To review Dynamite or talk about Dynamite or give my opinion about Dynamite. Not that you should care about my opinion, but let's see if we share an opinion or if we're seeing things in a cool way. I don't know. L let's just jump into it. I started with international championship match between Ray Phoenix and Nick Jackson and Ray Phoenix retained, of course. I don't know how the contenders for the international championships are selected, but next week uh, John Moxley is the contender and there was a segment backstage between Orange Cassidy, Hook and Rene Paquette and Orange Cassidy was... Uh, Moxley retained the title for like 3 weeks and I retained it for like 11 months. Uh, I don't want to say anything, but he's getting a title opportunity rematch and I don't, so... Yeah, and I kind of agree with that, but at the same time... Yeah, I don't know what to say because I have no idea how they're picking the contenders for that title. Next up, there was a short little segment between Adam Cole and Roderick Strong. Uh, it was a little bit funny, uh, but I don't know where we're going with this. I noticed recently that I'm saying a lot that I don't know where we are going with this. First off, I don't think this is a bad thing, but a lot of times I want to see a segment and just theory craft for the future, not necessarily because I know what's gonna happen or I want something to happen. I just theory craft. I, I just like to look in the future and think about some really goofy and wacky and amazing storylines that can, can come up with this. And here uh, I would like to think we're going to a storyline where eventually Roderick Strong and MJF are becoming friends. But this is very in the distant future and a lot of spins should happen, you know? Maybe when Adam Cole is having surgery himself, he's gonna call Roderick Strong and MJF and they all are gonna become friends or I have no idea. Basically, I would love something crazy like this to happen with this storyline to this, this point. Um, there were two or three matches that I didn't pay a lot of attention to. First off, there was a match between the Acclaimed, the Butcher and the Blade, they keep Sabian. I haven't paid attention to that a lot. Uh, do I regret it? No. Uh, because there is not a real build-up for this. Another match is uh, Kai Blue versus Tony Storm. I guess this is a crucial match for the timeless Tony Storm character, but I didn't pay a lot of attention to it because it was supposed to be a squash match, of course, but it was not really a squash match, but at the end Tony Storm won. So yeah, and the third one, I'm... I, I kind of regret that I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. I, I watched like the last 10 minutes of it, like Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega versus Kyle Fletcher and Takeshita. And uh, Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega won, basically beating the family. And after that, all of a sudden, Powerhouse Hobbs showed uh, up and uh, he joined the family and he squashed Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega. I would have loved for a spin like Chris or Kenny turning on each other and joining the family and basically leaving the other behind. Or maybe because Don Callis was like, Kyle Fletcher let me down, this kid let me down. Uh, I was thinking about Kyle Fletcher joining Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega. But um, I guess Powerhouse Hobbs is a good addition to the family. Uh, I guess next week we're gonna see Miro in that regard joining Chris and Kenny, which would be awesome to be fair, but uh, yeah, these were th three matches that I didn't pay a lot of attention to and uh, I'm really sorry if you're a fan and uh, you're really 
looking into these matches and I'm, I just brushed them off. We had Bullet Club Gold going out, calling out MJF and MJF was like, wait, I didn't attack your boy Switchblade in the back, I swear. I'm a scumbag, everything is open with me, why should I hide from what I have done? And at the end, he was like, okay guys, I'm gonna attack, it's gonna be one versus all three of you. And at the end, Switchblade attacked him from behind and basically we're gonna see Switchblade Jay White versus MJF at full gear. Do I want to see that match? Yes. Personally, I want really to see that match because I don't know what Jay White is capable of and I'm really interested to see him in full capacity. That's all. Last but not least, and we're gonna talk about this a lot, Edge aka the rated out superstar Adam Copeland in AW. Am I disappointed that he's in AW? No. Would I love if he stayed in WWE? Yes. But at the end of the day, I am backing up the guy with every decision that he takes. Of course, I would follow him everywhere because he's amazing and he uh, puts a lot of effort into his work, a lot of love, and I'm sure that AEW is gonna become so much better with him now. The segment that I'm talking about last night was basically he went out, he said why he chose AEW, basically because he wants to have fun with Christian Cage. Christian Cage came out, Edge was like, hey, let's tag team together, let's fight FTR, Young Bucks, etc. And Christian Cage was like, go flip yourself and Luchasaurus came out and Nick Wayne came out they tried to attack Edge, Edge speared them both and this is how the whole segment ended I'm excited to see Adam Copeland in AW it's different it's really different I have seen people in Twitter saying that they were expecting Edge to be WWE bound for life but and I was expecting that as well and if you think about it, Edge can spin a lot of stories in WWE itself, but most of them are stories that we have seen like 15, 20 years ago, and do we need to see them again? For example, I was really hyped to see Edge versus John Cena. John Cena is back, Edge is gonna be back now, and they can spin a little story that can retire Edge, and it would, would be the best ending because John Cena is the biggest rival of Edge. Another story is with Kevin Owens, maybe with Sami Zayn, a lot of the NXT guys. But if the main roster that Edge is gonna fight is the upcoming NXT roster, what is the difference then going into AEW, right? Because AEW is basically the equivalent, but they're a little bit more skilled, kind of. I'm really excited to see, for example, Edge versus Kenny Omega, uh, Edge versus Miro, as he said, Edge versus John Moxley, Edge versus Christian Cage. I guess it would be the final chapter of Adam Coldplay slash Edge. And there are a lot of matches that you can say that they're dream matches. Even Edge versus Brian Danielson, it's one of these matches. So I'm really excited for the future of Edge, rated our superstar Adam Copeland, and I would love to watch him anywhere because, as I said in the beginning, he's putting a lot of effort, a lot of work, a lot of love into what he's doing, and I'm sure that he's gonna put this effort in AW as a whole and the whole promotion will benefit from him and the entertainment element from it is gonna benefit the storyline be element is gonna benefit and everything is gonna improve from then on and I'm really excited also that he kept his music at the end of the day Outer Bridge are his friends so it's normal yeah you think you know me it's not the same it's not hitting the same but I'm gonna learn to love it because I love the guy so anyway Thank you guys so much for watching. That was it for AW Dynamite. 
and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Peace.